Good morning, folks. If you didn't see last night's video detailing the solar kill shot eruption that came off the departing sunspot, we are playing it here now. Skip ahead three minutes if you already saw it and don't need or want the recap. The Earth just got lucky. In 2017, the sun was on its way down in its cycle of activity, but a sunspot that had many questioning that downward trend has now unleashed a planet killer. Here at Earth, Satellites in orbit detected an X 8.2 solar flare, but the sunspot had already turned over the limb out of view. We saw the elevated after effects of the primary eruption, which must have topped out well over X 10 or perhaps X 20 or more. Analysis of the CME shockwave cloud bolsters this guess. The powerful X ray energy electromagnetically blasted out particles in the corona, the solar atmosphere including a moon's worth of material in the large looping umbral magnetic fields above the sunspot, which are entirely blown out by the solar flare. The eruption sent a shockwave through the corona that reached the Earth-facing half of the sun, rippling back, all the way to center disk in the southern hemisphere. From space-based coronagraphs blocking out central solar glare, we can see the enormity of the eruption. The static you see hitting the frame is proton radiation from the eruption itself. Now compare that with an X9.3 solar flare that was facing Earth less than a week earlier from that sunspot, and while it did surge similar particles to Earth and the satellite, it's nothing compared to the bombardment and saturation we are seeing with this event, and remember, it took place on a part of the sun we can't see from Earth. All planets are magnetically connected to the sun, creating flux transfer events of plasma, and this solar flare occurred where Earth's magnetic connection to the sun is often found, allowing the solar protons to surge to incredible levels, even among the highest energy protons in the 100 million volt range. These storms can last for hours to days and can be reignited by subsequent activity, even from the far side of the sun. Proton radiation comes with other forms of radiation as well, and astronauts in high-latitude polar flights are most at risk. These particles are cosmic rays of a sort, and so the corresponding health effects in the available literature apply, based partly on magnetic latitude, with again, polar being worst. We might also notice GPS, satellite, communication, and internet trouble until the storm subsides into level 1 territory or lower. The primary kinds of solar storms we look for with big solar flares are geomagnetic from the CME impact, and luckily, that's primarily going at Mercury, Venus, and Mars. As I said, the Earth got lucky, but truly, a titanic event and a possible planet killer has erupted from that sunspot once it has gone out of view. Be safe, everyone. Well, here we are this morning, protons still blasting the Earth, level 3 radiation storms continuing as we are finally seeing the end of the solar flare more than 12 hours later. Now folks, I am aware many of you have seen the analysis of this Enlil spiral from NASA for that CME blast. NOAA has not updated yet. Sun is in the center, Earth is the yellow dot over to the right, and if they really wanted you to understand this easily, they would tilt that far left portion of the graph so that it is as though we are looking from a perspective most of us can more easily get our heads around. Now, with NASA's analysis of the shockwave cloud firmly in mind, let's go see the actual shockwave cloud again on satellites. Do you see the problem? The CME is not confined to one half of the solar system from Earth's perspective or any perspective. The eruption was so powerful that kinetic lines are causing one of the failures that Goddard scientist Kong Papu Yen mentioned on our show three years ago. The solar wind plasma is magnetohydrodynamic. I will say, it is possible that we could actually see a glancing impact to Earth's magnetic field from this flare and CME, but it won't be too bad, just the faint edge. But CME coupling is expected at 1 AU is forecast to be reached within 24 hours, combined with the kinetic alpha waves and IMF from this coronal hole, seismic activity set to ramp back up here to start the week. Folks, if you want gruesome Irma footage, you can watch the TV or mainstream websites. At this point, I would like to recognize it has set a record for power outages and it's not even out of Florida yet. Positive thoughts for those in the path of the monster. I also want to note that these rainstorms in Europe are isolated off the low, but incredibly intense. Eyes on where they are forecast to drop again today. 
Folks, by the end of the week, you will know almost all the speakers coming to Observing the Frontier 2018, and the pre-registration period will be over. We'll have about one day of overlap, and we hope to see you in the desert. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got the rest of the world's wind maps, a null school run up through the shifting polar vortex structure, and shots of our star to close. It's 5.30 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.